Depending on how you look at it, one of the greatest benefits of blockchains can also be one of their greatest drawbacks. The decentralized nature of blockchains eliminates the single point of failure that can be associated with centralized systems. But decentralization is not without its own issues. Consensus and validation must be reached and can become a slow process that negatively impacts performance. Wouldn't it be nice if there was an alternative that capitalized on the strengths of both centralized and decentralized systems while avoiding the drawbacks? There's a project out there hoping to do just that, and in today's video, we're breaking down Holochain. Welcome to Crypto Sketch 101. We're the number one go-to spot for all things crypto, and we're glad you've stopped by. If you love cryptos as much as we do, please give this video a like, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we're diving deep into the Holochain project. We'll examine exactly what it is, how it works, and what separates it from blockchain technology. There's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. One of the first important things to know about Holochain is that it is just one component of a larger network. This network also includes Holo and the Holo token, two topics that we'll cover a little bit more in detail later in the video. Holochain itself is described as an open source, end to end, peer to peer framework that powers decentralized applications. It is a tool for developers that provides the necessary infrastructure and technology to create decentralized applications without the need of a blockchain or centralized server. This allows participants to have better control over their data and who has access to it. Decentralized applications on the Holochain network are known as Holochain applications or HAPs. HAPs have a number of benefits over decentralized applications. They can run faster, achieve higher scalability, and require fewer resources than blockchain-powered apps. Holochain utilizes an agent-centric approach. Using secure networks, it connects participant devices directly to each other eliminating the need for servers. Applications and data are stored locally on each participant's own computer, an approach that eliminates the need for consensus and allows HAPs in the network to run faster and achieve better scalability. Let's dive a little bit deeper into exactly how Holochain works by examining two of its core components. The first of these is the source chain. The source chain is a journal on each participant's computer that stores data locally. Each entry is signed cryptographically by the author and becomes immutable, just as it does on a blockchain once it is written to the journal. When a participant joins a HAPS network, he or she creates a public and private key pair that serves as a unique identifier. This enables participants to securely connect with others on the network, prove ownership of written content, and detect data alterations by third parties. Most significantly, every action recorded in the participant's source chain is authored and signed solely by them. The second component is known as a distributed hash table. With a blockchain, a proof-of-work consensus mechanism is used by all nodes in the blockchain network to achieve consensus. Some proof-of-stake algorithms, however, merely require a majority confirmation from the network to verify a transaction. With a DHT, verifying and confirming transactions can be done on each individual node. It does not require that all nodes in the network work together. There are a few key differences between Holochain and blockchains. While both are peer-to-peer -peer networks that operate without the use of a middleman, blockchains require global consensus. Additionally, current blockchain networks, especially those that utilize proof-of-work consensus, utilize far more energy than the Holochain network. The Holochain network also brings with it a number of other benefits that do not come with blockchains. Some of those benefits include better adaptability, efficiency, scalability, and extendability. Holochain is uniquely configurable as well. Each app can have its own standards and protocols and can make configuration modifications such as scalability, latency, or throughput. Privacy, resilience, and governance can also be configured. Whereas Holochain was designed as an open source framework for building decentralized applications, Holo is designed to allow users to use apps using regular web browsers such as Chrome and Firefox. Holo is a distributed peer-to-peer -peer hosting platform for HAPs. It acts as a bridge between HAPs and the current, centralized web. Holo is said to do to web hosting what Airbnb does to hotels. 
It allows anyone to be paid in Holo Fuel for hosting applications on their computers. Holo software is installed and runs in the background, allocating processing power and spare storage space to serve apps to the traditional web. Holo Fuel is the native currency of the Holo platform and represents a contractual service obligation that can be redeemed for hosting. To put it another way, publishers pay hosts in Holo Fuel for their services, which the latter can then exchange for other currencies through reserve accounts. Holo Fuel has a dynamic supply, meaning it doesn't have a cap, and it can be used for a few different things, including as a medium of exchange between hosts and publishers for hosting apps. Participants can also spend Holo Fuel through various apps and online marketplaces. Currently, Hot serves as a placeholder for Holo Fuel and will be replaced by Holo Fuel once Holo launches in beta. Upon that time, Hot holders will be able to exchange their tokens for Holo Fuel at a one-to-one -one rate. And that's all that we have for today's video. We hope you got a better understanding of the Holochain network, as well as its related hosting platform, Holo. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining and we'll catch you in the next video.